Come on, guys. Defend. 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 Wife said no. Wife said no. You go fight him. <laughs> in it? Yeah. He will love. What's the point? The point is this: in that very instance, she's in a dis disadvantaged position. I, as a man, have to perform. In the bed, I'm in a weak position. In the context, I want intimacy. If you say no to me, you're oppressing me. Yes or no? So now, when we look at heavy from that context, who's being oppressed there? Is the woman being oppressed or the man? I'm being oppressed. I'm saying, look, I, I, as Muslim men, we are not allowed to have girlfriends, right? We're not allowed, we, we don't have side chicks and missions and go around and sleep around, right? So then my wife is the one I have to have intimacy with. If you don't, if you don't have intimacy with me, you are opening the doors of fitna for me. So what we're seeing is when we look at it holistically, I'm the one that's being oppressed. Does that make sense? So whenever we hear a hadith, like bro, Mohammed was explaining as well, Let's look at it in context. And we know even, and forget my words, there are studies that show, I'll give you guys a link if anybody wants it, go and look. They did absolute st like studies um, where they checked a, a man and sex rather than a woman's is disproportionate. And I'm not talking about um, 50, 70, I'm talking 100 to 10 percent, like 100 percent, 10 percent. And it, that's, that's how it, uh, 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 um, uh, what it is. So it, it adds into the whole bowing down and the other thing. I thought I'll just add on to that. No, that's perfect sense, but it makes perfect sense. Does anybody, but, if anybody opposes it, please ask questions. It'll be a nice dialogue. <laughs> Anything you want to add on, please? No, I don't think, as I said, wallahi, I think, I think, I'll tell you why. I think sometimes some people, they yeah. have to change the commandments of Islam mm. to fit the ideas of the society. Yes. Like if the society is secular, we have to change society, Islam, to fit secularism. If the society is liberalistic, yeah, yeah. we have to change Islam to fit the liberal society. If the society is feminist, that doesn't work, right? Islam is Islam. It's one message. If you want to take it, it's from the Creator, right? I believe it's an issue, it's an issue of submission. It's not an issue of, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. I believe this is an issue of submission to Allah. Not submission to the husband. We're not saying submit to your husband. We're saying submit to Allah Azza wa If you submit to Allah, if Allah, as Allah gave you rights, right? He made obligations on you. Right? It's an equal trade. Like he gave the man rights, he made obligations on him as well. I don't see any women complaining why the man has to provide for the wife. No, not only that. I don't see anyone complaining but, about that. But not right? only that, I would say, yes. for example, why do I need to go to war and get my limbs cut off? I'll tell my wife, you go war, cook at home, I'll make banging dishes. But I'll make the best food you come home to. You go and get your limbs, arrows thrown at you. You got a big guy with a big sword coming at you. I would say, okay, is this, if I was to, I would have been I would say, okay, is this a woman's religion? Because if you look at what Muslim men have to do, bro, it's peak. It's peak. I have to provide. Why do I have to provide? You go provide. I have to go provide. I have to pay the mahar, the, uh, the wedding, all of this stuff. And then, so when we look at it perspective, wallahi, it makes perfect sense, you know? Yeah. Guys, if you have any questions, please do feel free to ask. Uh, maybe brother Muhammad as well. So you say that again? He's just saying uh, sense, ignorance, ignorance. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yes. What's the rule in, in, about rape in marriage? Uh, we, just, we, just, we just covered it with the hadith of um, if you ask your wife to come to the... The thing is clear. The hadith teaches us that you can't force your wife. Yani, when I mean force, you can't yani, force her because the, the, the hadith would have said if, she, if she's not coming for intimacy, force her. But the hadith doesn't say that. It says the angels will curse her to the morning. And we know, Allah, we know for the character of the Prophet ﷺ. If he was to call one of his wives to the bed and she didn't want to come, and we, I recently found out... Isn't that, that, that doesn't exist right in marriage, it doesn't exist in marriage. No, no, look, no, no, it, it, it does... It no, it does exist, in, it does exist, but what we're trying to say is, what do you mean by that? Like, let's put it into context. We know that there was a wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, I found out from Muhammad Ijab recently, I forgot the name of it. Um, he married her, and... Can I just finish it so I can just give context? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. you want to come close, come close. Sorry, let me just add on to this, I'm going to come back, yeah? Is that he married one of the a woman, and the w woman said, Audu Billah Min Dalik, or something like this. Have you heard of this? Audu Billah Mink. Mink, Mink, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And what did the Prophet do? Uh, Prophet Asa Salam, he divorced her. Okay, so yeah. he could have said, hold on a second, I married you. So the very reason that this woman, and we don't know why she said it, by the way, yeah? The, God knows there's what. There's explanations. Yeah. There's explanations for Ibn Hajar Asqalani, yeah. Imam al Nawi, and other yeah. of them. They said, for example, she didn't know who, 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 he, who he was. And she told him that she didn't oh. know that oh, this was the Prophet of Allah. Okay. Yeah. There was other other reasons that they explained. Yeah. That's one. Yeah. That's I believe that's the okay. main reason you could yeah. you could use that she didn't know who the Prophet of Salam yeah. was. So what does that uh, teach us, though? Isn't it? What does that teach us? That is the, the prophet... main. I just wanna. Uh, his question is yeah. saying if there is rape in in in, in marriage. Yeah. What does Islam say about that? That's yeah, what you're trying to say, right? Basically, it's basically consent. Yeah. That's why. Well, that's con, 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 okay. Yeah. Consent from whose perspective? Liberal perspective or Islamic perspective? <laughs> Well, to be honest, what, 
By the way, I'm not saying there's no consent in Islam, yeah? But I'm trying to make you think which way are you, which, which uh, ideas are you bringing? According to Islam, what's yeah. our perspective on this? So, no, what I'm trying to, because obviously what I heard you say, obviously. Come close, man. Sorry. Yeah, ask, ask sorry, a question. Sorry, sorry. Ask me so a question, name really, answer. No, obviously, what, um, Hold it next to you. What I wanted to say is basically, um, you said, uh, Hold the, it the, up. <laughs> sorry, consent. Yeah, yeah. Do you, obviously, I, I believe you don't need consent. You believe we don't need consent. Okay, are you yeah, saying that? That's why I want you like, to clear. Do you need, cons do you, uh, do you consent? Need for consent? Yes. Okay. okay, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, La darra wa la darar. Yeah? You cannot harm anyone, uh, anyone and you cannot harm yourself. So if I'm forcing, they will be harmed. There's yes. no doubt about that. Yes. So Islamically, it's, it's not correct for you to force your wife to do to do sexual intercourse with you, that's completely wrong. And vice versa, and, and the wife can't force the husband. Of course, 100%, 100%. Today's time, please. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. So really what yeah. happens if a woman is being abused in an Islamic society? If there's a sharia and a law and court system, because if we want to look at Islam, we have to look at Islam as a whole system, yeah. correct? So in an Islamic system, if a woman is being abused by her husband, she can go to the to the judge. He can separate between her, do khula, separate between her and her husband. And not only that, she will take her mahr. He's not going to take anything back, right? Because it's his mistake, it's his problem. So he will separate between them and he will give her the mahr. And if there is punishment for him, he will be punished. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he, say, he commands us to do that in the Quran. If a woman finds new shoes, chapter four of the Quran, I believe 125 or something yeah. like that, or yeah. 28. Allah Azza wa Jal says, if a woman finds new shoes from her husband, mm. she can look for khul as well. She yeah. has the, the option to separate herself from the husband. She goes to the judge, she prevents the evidences that she's being abused or etc. or some injustice are happening mm. to her. Mm. Then there will be separation. So Islam is a complete just religion. You cannot force anything on anyone else, but take Islam as a full system. Take it as a holistic system, right? You can't force. A lot of people, a lot of people, look at this as black and white. Well, matter is not black and white. Yeah, they want black and white answers, but the matter is not black and white. The matter is not black and white. Yeah. Let's say someone has committed the accident. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now the wife, the way I see, Islamic judge. A Western judge will be the case completely. That's why I said we're not talking about Western well, judge. Well, of course. Yeah. Well, of course, actually, with them, it's it's everything. Like, are you, are you asking what Islam says, or are you asking what the law says in the UK? Now, these two separate questions, yeah. No, but who Do you cares? get what I'm trying to say? I'm giving you the Islamic answer for your question, right? Yeah. Islam is perfect as a religion, as a system. Muslims are not, right? And a Muslim can live under a system which is not abiding by the laws that he believes in. Right? Which we are. But still, which we are, but still we're saying under Islamic system or non-Islamic system, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to harm your wife by forcing something on her. You're not allowed to do that either way. You get the point? Not only that, remember there's, there's a hadith of, there's a hadith of uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man, a man, a man came to, uh, look, a, a woman came to uh, him, check this out. A woman came to him and he said, uh, oh, what, uh, along these lines, he said that she, she wants a divorce from her husband, yeah? And he said, I hate him so much that I want to spit in his face. Like, like, she, like she said, I want to, you know this one, yeah? I'm not aware of this one. Yeah, okay, yeah, she should be basically said, I would want, like, I'm disgusted with him. Like, I would want to spit in his face. And the Prophet, what did he say? No, you shut up and go back to your husband. No, because when he sees animosity like that, and if I'm, mistake, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, he allowed them to divorce. So the thing is here, people make it seem as a Muslim woman are like, we oppressed and beat them up. Etc. Well, this is nonsense. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Even in the situation where you talked about. Um, There's a hadith on the issue you mentioned, yeah. but it's not in the same way you said. So yeah. I'm not sure if that's the, what yeah. you're talking about or not. Yeah. There's a woman, uh, uh, she was a wife of, a, of one of the companions. Yes. She came to the Prophet yes. and she said that I don't find any deficiency in him, yes. in his manners, in his religion, in anything, yeah. but a al kufr fil Islam, which means that she fears disbelief in what sense? Yeah. Is that disbelief of the ni'mah, of the blessing that Allah has given her. Yeah. She's not going to give her husband his rights. She doesn't feel attraction to him. Yes, that's that's, a, that's another one. This yes. one I'm talking about. I'm talking so, about. This was spit. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so she said. <laughs> so then the Prophet ﷺ, he said uh, to her, uh, "Did he give you mahr?" Yeah. She said, "Yes, he gave me a hadith, a garden." Yeah. So he he brought him and he said to her, yeah. give, "Give him back his mahr." Yes. yes. And then divorce her. Yes. Right. Yeah. So because she was not attracted to him, the Prophet ﷺ, and she felt yes. she yeah. felt she wouldn't be able to keep her rights as a wife. 
and that's the reason that's the reason if a woman yeah. feels she's not going to be able to keep her rights as a yeah. wife or yeah. husband there is no attraction between them yeah. there is whatever reason yeah. there is yeah. she's allowed to ask for to be separated yeah. but she has to return the mahr because you yeah. took something you took yeah. money and now you don't want we cannot otherwise, keep the money and go otherwise, away right otherwise, you have to at least <laughs> return you're a, the mahr yeah, you're a gold, you otherwise you're a gold digger you get me yes i take i take him man's money uh, and there's many like um, we was talking about like you know when you mentioned about it was in Shuz, you said uh, that um, Shuz, yes. yeah so for, means, and there's two instances because yes, Allah talks about the first one where it says for example if you have a disobedient wife yeah outright disobedient wife you talk to her and it's 434, 434 and yeah. if not you 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 boycott her from the bed so that's a sexual emotional like kind of boycott so she can you know fix up um, if not, then you can use some kind of force. Now, this force, obviously, we know from the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that you cannot cause harm, you cannot, you cannot hurt the individual, you can't cause pain. And so, to be honest, I don't know what kind I of... Think, I think, to be honest, I think this verse is grossly misunderstood. Yes. And I don't think it's represented correctly in the, yeah. when people speak about it. Okay. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, that's the beginning of the verse. Okay. So Allah says that men have something called qawama, yes. right? Why? Mm, yeah. Why? Because Allah favored them with certain things and with what they spend. They provide for the woman, they do the spending, right? So Allah has given them the virtue of making decisions for one of, for two reasons. One of them is that they provide, right? Then Allah mentioned the good righteous women. He said, So that righteous women, they will guard their chastity, right? When they're home, because they're righteous women, they're following. Then Allah speaks about the opposite side now. So mm. first he praised the good, righteous women. Yeah. Then he speaks about the women that will be disobedient. He yeah. says, Those that you fear disobedience from, nushuz, right? Yeah. Disobedience here means in the rights that the husband has only. Does not mean any type of disobedience, no. The husband has rights, right? So give an example. An example, the husband has the right to tell his wife not to go out of it without his permission. She okay. has to seek his permission. You know, he needs to know where his wife is going and where he's coming, coming from, right? <laughs> so if he says, for example, if there is an understanding between them that is fine, he's allowing her to go, that's a different situation. Yeah. But if he says to her, let me know before you go, then it's an obligation for her to tell him. If she goes without his permission, what would happen? Shaitan will come to his mind, your wife is cheating on you, she's going here, she's going there, right? Mm -hmm. And this will cause problems in that marriage. Mm -hmm. So then, it's an obligation on her to inform her husband where she's going and if, if she's going, right? So we're saying, Allah is saying, if, if you see something like this, like the woman is texting someone, she's hiding her phone, she's not showing you, she's going without your permission, there is signs of disobedience from the wife. Is she right? allowed to show her phone? I heard that you're not allowed to look at each other's phone, it's haram. No, the, the, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just checking. Yeah, yeah, I understand, yeah. There is a lot of, 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 uh, yeah. of uh, huh? no, different scholars view this, Some speak say, about this yeah, differently. Yeah, like, like because you're spy, you shouldn't be looking at each other's phones. Uh, yeah, but some, anyway, they, some, different discussions. Some scholars speak about this differently, to be honest. Oh, right? that's a different discussion. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, like Sheikh Fawzan, he said you can look at, her, at his phone and she, he can look at your phone. Really? Right, yeah. He said both of you can look at each other's phones, right? Because to me, that's the best opinion. Why? Because it closes the door of, of worrying. Mm -hmm. right? You're always worried what she sticks in, why he sticks in. If both of you are clear with one another, mm -hmm. you have nothing to hide. I, I, I have nothing to I, hide, I, you have nothing to I, hide. I, I disagree in the context. Mm -hmm. like, I, 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 the reason <laughs> is I believe, <laughs> no, for example, course, no. that yes. uh, you shouldn't. Because it's mm -hmm. firstly, there can be private sins. I mean, argument's sake, I don't know. She, one day she was trying whiskey. Argument's sake, yeah? <laughs> argument's sake. The thing is, me looking into that, it's a private matter between her and her Lord. She may have repented, fixed her ways. It's going to cause a bigger fitness in the marriage. It's best that I don't know. And there should be a trust issue. But I understand where you're coming from. I think it's a fair... I, I follow I think, this opinion. I think it's yeah. not a black and white thing. It's not. It's Depending not, it's on my marriage, right? Not, yeah. If the marriage is like okay, what you're saying, there's yeah, trust. Yeah then you don't need to look at each yeah. other yeah, at all. Yeah. If the marriage, there is problems, which yeah. always making problems, why you, who yeah, you're texting, yeah. who you're not texting, yeah. then it's a different yeah. story, right? And also so like, I believe it's yeah. not a black and white matter. Yeah, That's not, why yeah. I say the scholars have difference of, of, this, of speaking, yeah. sorry? Yeah. Uh, but let's just... Let's, let's just finish the verse finish right it, yeah, before, yeah, yeah. before we move. Sorry, sorry, keep in mind, keep in mind. Sorry. It's my fault, it's my fault. I went to the phone. But don't worry, don't worry. Okay, just coming back. So if there is disobedience from the wife for the rights that the husband has on her, then Allah Azza wa Jal, He says the first thing, He says, فَعِذُوهُنْ Fa here, the letter fa is for tertib, it's for order. So the yeah. first thing you must do in order yeah. is to give them advice. Now, how long do I give them advice? Can someone tell me? Depends. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Myself. That's the problem that people, I believe people do not represent this verse correctly because ah. they don't explain it properly. Well, today we're going to learn. No, <laughs> I'm learning as well. I'm learning as well. No, no, no. So when, it says, when it says fa'idhuhun, give them advice, yeah. it means to give them advice for as long as you as a husband know the advice is not working anymore. Okay. Every husband knows his wife. 
Ah. So when you keep advising her, you know when she's not listening to you anymore, mm. the advice doesn't work, right? Yeah. But how long can that take? One year, two years, three years? We don't know. Okay, what? so you know it, it, exactly. So you don't say no one should fit too. So you don't say listen to me. Then you move to the next step. <laughs> then you move to the third step. There's no such thing. That's yeah. what people misunderstand ah, about the verse. Okay. The first step you have to apply completely until you know you're aware that she no, she's not listening to your advice anymore. You're telling her Allah says this. He's not listening. Okay. Then you move to the next step. Which is Allah then she, she says fi mm -hmm. Yeah, fi mm -hmm. Then forsake them. And there is a very important point here. Wahjuruhunna fi madaji'i in the bed, ah, which means yeah. what? That you do not have sexual intercourse with your wife in the same bed. Oh, right. I thought it meant like you go to the sofa. No, 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 no. In the same bed. I mean, bed. I actually in thought the, you go to the sofa. No, in the so same. So you're not allowed to, let me get this right, you're not allowed yes. to boycott her in a different room. What Allah advise you, you're allowed to do, your husband, oh, you're but allowed it's better. to do. But I'm saying what Allah advising you is this. Yeah. Allah is telling you the step you should do yeah. is that both of you are in one bed. Yeah. And she tried to touch you and you're like, don't touch me. Yeah, you're away from him. Yeah, Why that boyfriend. has more, more, much more psychological effect ah. than just sleeping on the sofa. Yeah. That means you're saying, you know what? So you can see, but you can't touch. Exactly, yeah. So you're saying to her, basically, you see, I yeah. can control myself. If I don't need you, I don't need you. And that's, I'm sleeping next to you, but I'm not going to touch you. And not only that, for example, we talked about a man's sexual desire is much more higher than a woman's. Imagine as your husband, you know that and he's not talking to you. Yes. The point is to make the woman aware that sexually, look, is. We know how a man, a man is. For him to forsake you intim intimately, he must be really hurt. So that's try he's trying to get that message across to the wife. Mm -hmm. so, Sorry, I'm commentating. No, here. no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm doing something. Like, okay, yeah, you're adding, it, no, problem, it, yeah. no problem. So, so what we're saying is this is yeah. a very important step, right? It's completely different. It has a psychological effect and is much more. Why is it better? Because Allah commanded it. Yes. If you think you can do something better, you're already wrong. You mm -hmm. get the point. Allah's given you advice. No one can give you better advice than Allah. Yes. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, Wadribuhun. Here we come to the point where there's yeah. the contentions of people. Okay, so people, now right? you want to so be your wife up. That, no, Allah doesn't say that. Well, what does he say? Well, Allah doesn't say that. Yes. This is the point. The word daraba does not necessarily mean beat. The word beat in English or the word strike in English or all of these words do not represent the word daraba correctly. I believe personally there is not a word in the English language that can translate oh, really? the word. Yes, I don't believe that. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Prophet he said you do tayammum and oh, then yeah. he said you do daraba on the floor. Okay, how do you we do tayammum for example? Uh, let's imagine this is the floor. You do like this, you do like this and you wipe Let's just face. explain. So yes. if, as Muslims, if we need to pray and there's no water anywhere, right. we do this action which is? Which is that we find some, uh, some turab soil. dust yeah. or soil and yeah. we put our hands, yeah. we do like this, then we wipe our face. So the same word is used here? Daraba. So the so prophet you, says daraba. Yeah. So does this sound like beating to you? Am I beating? So the, you're not, you're not, you're not doing fence? this. Am I striking the fence? Oh, you're not doing this, right? Yes. So I'm not doing this. Okay. So what we're saying is the daraba here can mean physical contact between two, two objects, yeah. and it can range from very severe to very low. Okay. Now, how do we know which one is it? We know from who's our example to follow. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, "Laqad kana lakum fi Rasulillah uswatun hasana." You had in the Prophet of Allah the best of example to follow, yeah. and also Allah commanded us to follow the companions and the way of the companions and how the companions understood these verses. Yeah. Right. So we look at the first three generations. We look at the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam and how they apply these verses. So we see, for example, that Aisha radiAllahu anha she said the Prophet Alayhi Salam did not hit his wife ever. Yeah. Ever. ever. So we see the best of example, he didn't hit his wife ever. Yeah. So we know that the best thing is that you don't hit your wife ever. Right? The first, the first point, if I just finish it, is the first point. The second point is Imam Shafi'i, he said, he spoke about the, the, the conditions. He said that, look, you do not hit the face because of the hadith in, in Sahih Muslim and okay. Sahih Bukhari. You cannot hit the face, right? Yeah. You cannot, uh, the Prophet he says, Darban ghayra mubarrih. Darban ghayra mubarrih, it means unsevere. Hitting, which means what? Is it, which can, means? Can I demonstrate? Like, is it like something like this yeah, or like yeah, this? this or like, hey, stop or this. Like this, you know? stop this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that. Show, yeah. show me. How but, is it like? Give there is more. There is more. Like this. Okay. Or like this. Yeah. But or like this. Yeah, yeah. But can the someone call the police, is, please? Okay. Because <laughs> the point is, it's on camera now. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the point okay. is what? Because there is more explanations to it as well. Okay. Yeah. So the Prophet ﷺ he says, Yeah. You don't leave a mark, yes. right? It's not severe hitting will leave a mark. You don't break bones. You don't do any of these things, right? You don't hit the face. So it's not really hitting. What that's kind of hitting why, is that? What am I supposed to do? So that's why I'm Stop saying, and, and we see the companions, how did they understand? We see Ibn Abbas explaining the verse, narrating, saying it's, he's asked, what is darban ghayra mubarah? What is unsevere hitting? Mm. He says, bisuak. Just like a pen, you're hitting with a pen or something. Yeah. This is bistiwaki wa nahwa. So he gives us the explanation. The daraba here, which can mean physical contact between two ob objects, is in the lowest point. 
Well, cannot go more than that. In fact, in a narration in Sahih Abu Dawood, the Prophet ﷺ, he said sorry. explicitly, لا تضربوا إماء الله Do not hit the women servants of Allah. Yeah. He gave a direct command that you shouldn't hit the women servants of Allah. Mm. But then some of the companions, they said they are being disobedient to us. They're not listening to us. So the Prophet permitted them to do that hitting which is unsevere, which is with all the conditions we mentioned. But a more important, a more important point to add up as well about, about uh, hitting and not hitting. <laughs> okay, yeah. coming back now, they made me made me lose the point in my mind. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ, yes. he commanded us to do that. Yeah. He commanded us. The default position is you don't hit because yeah. there is a hadith commanding you to do that. Yeah. Why is the hitting uh, uh, legislated anyways? You read the next verse. What does the next verse says? 4:35. Allah Azza wa Jal He says, وَإِن خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبَعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا. If you fear separation between both of them. Yeah. So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying the last step, which is this step of the physical contact, is a sign that nothing is working anymore. Yeah. I've advised you, I've forsaken your bed for as long as I see it's not working. Yeah. Forsaking your bed is the same. For as long as you know it's not working anymore, right? I've, uh, it, it came to me using some, some, some physical contact between you to show you, to show you the level that I tried everything. I've yeah. done everything in my power. Yeah. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he says in the next, so this, Physical contact is a sign mm. that nothing is working anymore. Okay. That's why Allah is, is legislated this, right? Then Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, bring one judge from her family. Yes. And bring one judge from his family. Yeah. And let's see if they want reconciliation. Okay, interesting. If they want re reconciliation, Allah will bring their hearts together. If they don't want, they, they, if they don't want, they can go separate ways. So that is the proper explanation of the verse, right? Yeah. So the verse is not properly understood by many people. And as we said, the word daraba. Keep that in your mind. The word daraba can mean multiple things. Like Allah says, daraba Allahu mathala. Allah put forth an example. Allah says, fa'ida adarabtum fil ard when you travel. You use the word daraba as well, which means to travel. Mm. So the word daraba does not okay. necessarily mean hitting, and it does. It can mean physical contact yeah. between two objects, okay. and it can vary from different levels, and it can also mean metaphorical. Okay, interesting point here. Yeah. So, because you mentioned before that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about, and this is very interesting. Allah also talks about how a woman should deal with a rebellious husband. So there is a similar verse. Well, now in this situation, it's the husband that's bad, not the woman. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody can come and say, well, hold on a second. <coughs> then why doesn't the woman have the same procedure? Talk first, move from the bed, and then use some kind of a force. Now, if we think about this, guys, if, we was, if Allah was to say to a woman, advise him first. If he doesn't listen, move away from the bed. If not, use force. Now, what force is your wife? Is, is your wife in an advantage position where she's gonna come, imagine like my wife, yeah, coming to me and trying to like, hey, let me tell him off. She's not, she's not in an advantage, advantageous position, right? So that's the reason why Allah didn't give the same procedure to the woman because physically he's stronger. You get what I'm trying to say? So that's why if anybody asks no, this I mean, question... No, he's probably stronger than me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. So the thing is, in this instance, that's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give the same procedure, prescription to the woman because it's, it's not gonna be the same. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Um, and yeah, I hope that answers your and question. Allah, I, so just, yeah. I told you it's chapter 4, 128, yeah? yeah? And if a woman fears from her husband contempt or evasion, which is the shoes, the same, same thing, word, same right? Thing, yeah. There is no sin upon them if they make terms of settlement and settlement is best, right? Yeah. So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying settlement, settlement here is the khul'a that we're talking about. Yeah. Which is the agreement between the husband and the wife. That um, we're going to be separated, I'm going to give you this amount back for example, or mm -hmm. part of your mahar back and we will be separated. There is abuse, you can go to the judge and he can force him to separate between both of them. Mm -hmm. So Allah has given different choices exactly. to, to, to the man and to the woman. Make clear what? No, no, but if the intimacy happened, if I'm not mistaken, there is, you can't, the mahar... It's, can't. Not, as, 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 it's yeah. not as easy as that. No, there is, it depends on the case and depends yeah. on the situation. It's not as easy as if you're in the right or in the wrong, bro. Yeah. It's, a, it's a different story, right? There is more, more to it. You have to bring it case by case. By the way, so, 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 by the way, let me just say this point. Marriage and divorce is one of the things that you shouldn't speak about without knowledge. Yes. It's why there's children involved. Yes. There is uh, uh, women and, and men involved and families involved and houses involved. Yes. Not a small issues. Yes. There was uh, companions and tabi'in and one of them only used to give uh, fatawas about uh, divorce and marriage. There was tons of them and they know more than we would ever know. But they did not speak about it out of fear yeah. of the consequences of making a decision regarding yeah. these issues. Yeah. So it's a case by case, it's a case by case situation. But I want to mention something yeah. very important that you mentioned about the mahr. The issue in our societies today, 
why a lot of young men and women are, are resulting to do haram is because of the issue of mahr. We're making the mahr, yes. uh, 10,000 billion pounds, you have to bring two Mercedes, uh, 10 Ferraris to get married, right? And this was not the way of the Prophet ﷺ. This was not the way of the companions and this is not what Islam teaches you to do, right? Yeah. So there is agreement is between the husband and the wife yeah. about the mahr, but we yeah. look at the situation of the husband. Like if the guy is, uh, is Bill Gates, okay, ask for millions, okay, that's fine. <laughs> but if a guy doesn't have money, look at his situation as a father. If he's coming to propose to your daughter, look at his situation. No, but who's the mahar? I know maybe it's a different opinion. Who's the right of the mahar? Is it woman's or the uh, husband, uh, the father? Usually it is it is the right of the woman. But yeah. I'm saying who speaks to the husband is the father. Yes. So usually the father is the one who says we want but, this, we want that. But he has to ask the, the daughter what she but wants. But they usually don't. Do okay, you know they that? should. They usually they, don't. Yeah, that's they should. Big, that's because, another big problem. They yeah, usually don't. Yeah. They usually decide for themselves. Yeah. As the wali, they say, I know what's best, best for my daughter. Yeah. And then he asks, because the, 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 the point is that the wali is the one who's going to speak with the husband, right? Yeah. He's going to present the terms. You're saying, what you're saying correctly, he should agree with the girl first yeah. with the amount he that she to, wants. He has to, of course. Otherwise, what to. they used to do is they used to sell like their daughters as like cattle or something like, oh, I want this one, uh, uh, this much money. And they, they didn't even ask for the permission. Selling the daughters, to, yeah. yeah, like in that context. That's why the mahar is her right. But even the cat. Yeah, but, okay. but I'm saying that yeah. you see the problem is this, yes. is this. The main problem you want to focus on, which is a lot in the community, is this. Yeah. Is that they're asking for a lot, right? Yes. They're asking for a lot. And not only that, by the way, the father, some girls are also asking for a lot, right? That, that's, so this, but this that's is their a, right. Yeah. I'm going to have to differ with you. That's the right, I agree with you. The, look, they might not get married. They can ask for a I million pounds. You're not getting married, but you that's agree, their right. Do you agree with me, yeah. even is the right? If they want to marry someone, they should also look at the guy's situation. Okay, they but can. If, if, I'm, if my situation yeah. is bad and yeah. the woman wants to but, marry but, you. But, but my, I'll tell you about the situation with my, my wife, yeah? Okay, my wife gave me a. Personal uh, stuff. No, my, my, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, well, like, because I didn't think it's a very important matter. Yes. It's a reality. And not yes, only yes, that, yes, yes. Ahead, with, yeah. with my situation, I'm not going to go into details, but what I'm saying is, my wife gave me an installment plan. Yeah, she said, for example, <laughs> no, no, that's a hug. She said, and if you can't, mm. I forgive you. Yeah, that's good. So, so the thing is, yes. like, do you get what I'm saying? That's her right. Mm -hmm. And what she asked for, I said, look, at the end of the day, if, if I'm happy with you, etc., fine. And she said, look, you can pay me in installment. That's her hug. And she said, if you can't, I forgive you. Sure. So the point is this, it's, it's at your discretion, but if you're going to ask for some, I don't know, 20 grand, you're not going to get married. So it's up to you. So, so the, the point we're trying yeah. to make is, I agree with you completely. It's her right, yeah. right? They, 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 they have to agree with each other. Yeah. But I'm saying a more essential point. I'm yeah. saying, because you see the problems in society, yes. it becomes yes. a, a, a necessary thing for us to yeah. think about lowering the mahr as well. Okay. When you see, when you see, yeah. this, the darura, darura yeah. comes there, maybe they're missing the point but I'm, I'm okay, saying. Okay, okay. The point is, you see a lot of young girls yes, and boys zina. Doing, committing zina. Yes. Why? Because marriage is hard. So if we keep encouraging this idea, that's what I'm trying to say, yeah. that you have to ask for a lot, you ask ah, for, yeah. then we're causing more problems, right? Yeah. So they will have to resolve to the haram. Because the halal true, door is true, very, is very uh, restricted. But Mohammed, have you seen it from this perspective? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but what you're saying is correct as well. I'm an, not disagreeing. Another perspective, with you. yeah, which I, I observe. I'm going to be talking about my marriage documentary, guys. I know it's a bit late, but this is very important. A bit late, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Seven years late, uh, okay. inshallah. I don't know how long uh, it is. Yeah. But this is a very important matter, and yes. I specifically tell sisters mm. to ask for, like, don't take it as hujja, good amount. Well, look, I believe around three to four thousand pounds is okay. reasonable. Why? Because yeah, reasonable, let agree. me tell you why. I agree. Because there are men out there mm. who who want to take advantage, mm. and this is very important because here Islam gives right to protect you from men who are going to use you. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Because if you go and say, okay, yeah, but like you know, some sisters get a piety attack. Yeah. No, just read Quran for me. Yeah. What happens is the following. Yeah. If the guy has bad intentions. Mm. Yeah. Your wali, your wali is your guardian. He's not really in the picture. In his head, he's thinking, what have I got to lose? What would you want? A hundred pound ring? Ah, no problem. When your mind is high. If he's got the wrong intentions, he's thinking, bro, free grand, and my intention is only intimacy and I want to leave next week, uh, forget that. So your mahar actually protects you in that instance, but what you're saying is, don't go but to two extremes. Agreeing with, I'm agreeing yes. with you, do you know why? Yeah. Because I don't think, I'm not talking about three or five thousand, yeah. I believe that's a reasonable amount. Yeah. I'm talking about the exaggerations that take yeah, place, like 50 right? 50 grand and yeah, the wedding, and a car, and that's the, the, the beginning, you're yeah, going to yeah, pay more uh, later on as well. The point is, I'm talking about the exaggeration, right? Yeah. Three to five, we can do it. Like if a man yeah. works, he can provide. Well, he can. I think, well, like yeah. he can. I think anyone in this society can do this. Yes. So that's a reasonable amount. So yeah. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. But what I'm talking about is the exaggeration, exaggeration right? Yeah. So on that point, I'm saying that the, 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 the parents, the wali and the girls have to try to look at the situation as well. Because in the end, I'll tell you this, right? Yeah. Some girls, right? 
they ask for a lot of money yes and they end up not getting married in the end right then yeah. in the when they're old they have to resolve to marry anyone whoever is in front of them yeah, because yeah, now yeah, you're 30 yeah. or 40 you're not going to find someone in his 20s or he wants to get married to you right so sometimes when we look at the situation because it always apply, it comes back to the urf, yeah. the culture the society how is the society and we give the commandments based on how the society is do you get yeah. the point yes so what you're saying is completely correct so mm -hmm. look at which country you are look at the situation of the husband that is coming do not make a lot of exaggeration but also take yeah. your right yes as he's saying and that's the balanced view that we want to take forward yes. but when we look at the times of why am I saying look at the situation? Yeah. Prophet yeah. when the yeah. companion came to him and he said to him, I don't have anything. Yeah. He says to him, He says to him, a cloth. He says, I don't have. Yeah. He says, even a ring from silver. He says, I don't have. <laughs> he says to him, anything. He says, I don't have. He says, you will be Quran, then teach your Quran. Yeah, he, yeah. Look at his, he look at his situation. Yeah, yeah. He saw he has nothing. Yeah. And he needs to get married. He yeah. has some desires he needs yes, to fulfill. Yes, yes. So uh, the Prophet, based so on so his situation, he said to him, marry her with the Quran as a mm. So we have to also look at the situation of the individual that yeah, is coming. Yeah. Not all people are equal, yeah. right? Not all people have the same amount of sure, money. Sure, sure. But we're not saying waive your rights as, as a wife. Mm. But the most important thing is to look for a pious, righteous man anyways. Yeah. If you do, he's not going to abuse you. Do you get the yeah. point? Yeah. The right thing is to think for a righteous, pious person to begin good with. Good adab. Because the Prophet for. said, with good character as well, manners. Because there is a lot of brothers, let me tell you, they've got the, they're got wearing the piece, they look the part, trust me, they've got maswak, they've got three maswaks in his mouth. Yeah, not one, he's got three, he's got Quran under his belt. I'm telling you, and even the Prophet would warn, you know, some of them, like this man, his, his stick is heavy, like he'll beat you up basically. The point is this, don't think religious outfit, this goes to even the sisters, niqab, hijab, don't think just because somebody talks to talk or looks the part, they're religious. Look at the adab, the akhlaq, the, wallahi, I'm telling you, you would marry someone who's praying tahajjud at night, Quran, everything, and he's an oppressor to you. So be very careful to that. I'll tell you something. I, I yeah. want to just make mention a small yes. point. Because and then we're going to open, we're gonna open up the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a, a small point. Adab and akhlaq, uh, manners, yeah. are not separated from deen. Yes. Because some people separate manners from Exactly. Deen. We don't say, if you say someone is praying and doing worship, yes. he does not have the full deen. Yes. Manners are a part of the religion. Like haya, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, al haya min al iman. Yeah. Haya is from your iman, is from your faith. Yeah. That would mean that manners are also a part of your creed, of your aqidah, of your deed. It's not just the it's not just the worship part, yeah. but the manners part is a part of your religion. It's fundamental. So if you say someone, yes. Yeah. So if you say someone has a religion, yeah. that has to include manners. Exactly. Because so when I say said, a religion, I mean also includes manners. Exactly. Because manners is part of religion. Because the Prophet not separated. said, "I came for nothing but to perfect good character." And this is fundamental. Uh, just end on this note, and you guys can ask questions. Yeah. Why did look a lot of the people who accepted Islam? Do you think the Prophet ﷺ showed them miracles? It was his character. He was so truthful. His manners were so amazing. When he came and said, I'm the Prophet of Allah, they said, We have no choice but to believe you because of your adab, your character of who you are. That is so profound. Wallah, if you think about it, him alone was the evidence. And Allah chose him because of his adab, his truthfulness. His own enemies would give their belongings for him to look after. Look what that says. So let people see Islam in you rather than you repeating yourself, you know, I know this verse or that verse. But anyways, if there's any questions, anybody wants to ask about anything. women's rights, men's rights, ask left anything. rights, no problem. Or anything. Anything. You mentioned about the hajj, yeah? Yeah. Um, someone playing and becoming an oppressor. Yeah. Salah changes, the, salah changes the character of a person. So why would a person that prays the hajj yeah. be an oppressor? I don't understand that. Okay, so you see, this is where, uh, this is, I think, look, I, there is, I heard of a hadith, I don't know how true it is, I want to be careful. I will double check it. This is what I heard, but I'm, I'm going to double check, inshallah. Is that, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the Prophet said, I can give you in, a hadith in, on the in, issue in, if you want. Oh, please, maybe, okay. maybe that okay. might be the one. The hadith of the Prophet, he asked his companions, that, Do you yeah. know who's the bankrupt? Yeah. Right? Then the companions, they said, Allah wa Rasulu alam, the Prophet and his, uh, Allah and the Prophet, they know best, right? So, so the Prophet started describing someone yeah. who prays the Hajjud, who, who does Adhkar, who does all of these things, who does all of the actions that we're talking about. Then he says that he stole money from this person. He backbited this person. He done an evil deed to this person. So the Prophet he said, that's the bankrupt. The yes. bankrupt is not the person who doesn't, doesn't have money. The bankrupt is the person who's having mountains of deeds that he wasted with his bad manners and, he, and the bad things that he's doing as well, right? So I don't know if that's exactly. what you're looking for. There was another hadith, but the thing is, when we're looking at someone praying salah, uh -huh. the salah is the right of Allah. You can be, look, let me tell you something. You can be a mass murderer. Like in the morning, you're stabbing 10 people a day. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, yeah. You have to pray salah. 
The salah is the right of Allah. It's got nothing to do, like obviously it's the salah, Allah says it will keep you away from like evil deeds, etc. But the point is this, don't look at someone's salah and tahajjud and think that this person is an amazing person. He might not be. He should be. Maybe sometimes, maybe he's praying, maybe there's no khushur, whatever it may be. But don't look at his salah and say, Oh, he must be a very good person. No, he might be a, a dhalim. Like the, 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 one of the words, do you get what I'm trying to say? Prophet yeah. Salaam, he spoke about the, the khawarij, yeah? Yeah, khawarij, you know, yeah, the khawarij, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said to, to the companions, yes. including Abu Bakr and Umar, right? Yeah. The best people in this Ummah, right? Yeah. And he said to them, تَحْقِرُونَ صَلَاتَكُمْ لِصَلَاتِهِمْ That yeah. you will feel your prayer is nothing when you look at their if prayer. If you see them, yeah. You, you look at yourself. the khawarij. Yeah. He says, you, you look at their recitation, قِرَاءَتَكُمْ You will look at your recitation and your Qur'an. You will say this is so low when you look at them. But he said that it yeah. does not really settle yeah. in their hearts. Yeah. The action are outward, they're not inward, right? It has to be the balance between the two. The faith in the heart and the actions outwardly as well. Yes. Because we do not know the intention of the person doing the exactly. action. We exactly. know that the actions are there. There is yeah. the hadith as well. This is a very, very strong hadith, right? Prophet ﷺ said the companions, they came praising one of the, uh, the, the other companions who was fighting and he was destroying enemies and killing and, and they were praising him for the Prophet. Prophet ﷺ, he said he's from the people of the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were shocked. Yeah, yeah, the, guy yeah, yeah. Is in jihad, the guy is in jihad and he's doing all of this. The Prophet is saying he's in hellfire. Wow. Then one of the companions says, by Allah, I would not stop until I see, follow him and I see why the Prophet said that. So he followed that companion. The companion was in the battlefield. Then he was stabbed or he was, he was, he was, uh, he was cut. injured. He was, he was injured. And he, yeah. Then he felt so much pain, so he killed himself. Yeah. So that companion came to the Prophet ﷺ and he says, I testify you are the Messenger of Allah. Because you, we were praising him. We see yeah. from outwardly he's doing all the, these good deeds, right? Yeah. But from inside, yeah. the, Allah knew and informed the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ that he wasn't like you thought he was. Then exactly. the Prophet started saying that you see a person outwardly, right? Doing the deeds of the people of paradise. Then he starts doing the people of Hellfire, he dies and he goes to the fire. Well, it's so scary. And then he there's, says, There's an arm, arm link between him and Jannah. Then he says, You will see the person doing the work of Hellfire. You think that's an evil person, a bad person. At the end of his life, he will start doing the work of the people. Of paradise, he will enter paradise. But he says, Key thing is, he says, In what is apparent for the people. So that's what we see. But we don't see inside. Oh, well, Only so Allah Azza wa Jal knows. So, scary, so if you see, so starting by myself, if you see anyone you think yeah, is a good, yeah, righteous yeah, person yeah, 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 yeah. doing this, that doesn't mean anything. Don't mean Look nothing. at what he's saying. Is what he's saying accordance to what Allah and his messenger are saying? Or is he's just his opinions and what he thinks? Balance it this way. Individuals, the religion is not known by individuals. Individuals are known by the religion. Meaning that we know this is a good person because he's following the Islam. We don't know Islam is good because this guy is good, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. make that balance in your life, inshallah. Sure. Yeah. Any questions, guys? Yes. yes. I had a private question for him and then all of this started <laughs> anyways. But, uh, anyway. we, we planned it's, it's, and Allah planned and he's yeah, the best of plan. It's a different question. I just want, yes, I just want yes. to clarify. No worry, no worry. Yes. Um, you see the hadith, uh, I think it's in Sahih al-Bukhari, where it talks about um, uh, in, <clears throat> you should support your brother and sister. Yeah, yeah, that Support one, that your one. brother whether he's oppressed or he's the oppressor? Exactly. Yeah, that yes. one, that one yes. hadith. And then one of the companions uh, said to the Rasulullah yes. how do I support uh, my brother when he's oppressing? And he said by holding him back. Yes. I just want to clarify something. Is it um, how is that supporting your brother when when you're holding him back physically, you're physically showing him that you're against his oppression? But it says in the hadith you're supporting him. No, no, stop you his oppression. Answer? No, you can answer. Uh, you, stop, you, you, no, stop him physically. Stop his oppression. Oh. It, it yeah. can, yes. Yeah, the pro stop him can include three things as we know. Prophet he said, If you see something wrong, either you change it with your hand if you're able, if you can, then with your tongue, with your speech. If you can't, then you hate it in your heart and that's the weakest of Iman, right? So, how are you uh, 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 aiding him or supporting your brother? Yeah. You're supporting his afterlife. Yeah. That's the, we don't care about this life. This life is not the thing. You're saving his afterlife. You're saving him from doing the evil thing, from the punishment that he will, he will see in the afterlife. That's, that's what I was yes. Uh, but also you're stopping him. Like imagine, look, imagine I'm, let's say I'm oppressing you. Yeah. I'll come and I rob your money every day. Yeah. He comes and says, yeah, Aki, yes. yeah, what, what are you doing? And he advises me. He's stopping me from oppressing you. And he's saving my hereafter. So do you get it? I'm stopping. He's helping me stop the oppression uh, by stopping me from hurting you and hurting myself in the hereafter. But doesn't he still have the intention of oppressing you? No, no, but the thing is, even if, if I have the intention of robbing you again today, he stopped me and says, Yaki, in the hereafter, da 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 da. Are we judged for our actions or our intentions? Actions. 
even if he has the work, if you what? have the yeah. intention to, you know what, do something evil in this whole, I don't want to give examples, yeah? Because yeah. we know people will misuse this, yeah? yeah? So we say someone is doing something horrible here. Yeah. You have the worst intention, but you didn't do it. Will Allah punish you? Okay, Allah, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he told us that Allah, He forgave us what we think in our heads, the things that you think in your mind, right? Yeah. As long as you didn't say or do, right? So Allah, Azza, if, even if He has the intention to oppress, but you stopped Him from the action, and what He will be punished for is the action, not the intent. No, he might, be, he might be rewarded because in the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who so said not. that if I intend to hit you and I don't, I get a good reward. I get one reward yeah. because I intend to, but I didn't carry the action out. So I get a reward. Yeah, yeah that's no, fine. No, that's no, fine. That's fine. Good question. Any more questions? Anyone wants to become Muslim? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Repeat after. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Come, come here. He's behind the, the, the... It's okay, it's okay. Um, you need to hear you, so, because people want to know your... Yeah, just, okay, just, yeah, so you can you... Inside, no, you no, 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 I'm okay here. Yeah. Um, yes. So can you explain for me, what must a person do now, besides believing in the one God, because the, major, the main theme here seems to be, between Christianity and Islam, is one's believing in three God, one believing in one God. Beside that, what must an individual do to enter into paradise, that's the first thing. The second thing is this, because I've heard from many Muslims here now, that you can live a wicked life, as long as you're Muslim, you're gonna burn, let's say you burn 10 million years, but after that you go to paradise. For me that seems unjust, it doesn't seem right. So can you just tell me what, what you believe on can, that? Sure. Can you, you come a little bit closer? Because I believe he's going to answer and you're going to ask me questions. Answer as well, he's like going to yeah. turn into dialogue. If you can, can come, come in the middle if you okay. want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. So, so you, please. Okay. So first, I want to ask you if, I, if that's possible. What, what do you believe yourself? <laughs> I will answer your questions. I don't. I, okay. I, 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 I'll I tell promise you, you afterwards, I rather, please, okay. if you don't mind. Okay. So the, the 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 first question you said is what should you do to enter paradise? Correct. That's that's the that's most first, important first question. Point. First point. Okay. Yeah. So Muslims believe. The entering paradise is a very simple thing, it's a very easy thing, right? It's not a hard thing to do. What you have to do is simply to believe in Allah. Okay. We're not saying believe in one creator. Okay. Because Allah is not just any one creator, yeah? yeah. Right. Allah is a specific one creator with attributes and with, uh, with names that befit His Majesty, right? Okay. So when we say one creator, a Jew can tell you I believe in one creator, right? right. But his creator is not Allah, mm. right? Okay. Okay. He, has, he believes in certain things that we don't believe, yeah. right? A Christian tell you I believe in one God, but he means three in one, right? Okay. Mm. So one is not the, the, the thing you need to believe in. Allah is what you need to believe in. Okay. First point, yeah? yeah? Second point is you have to follow the prophet that is assigned to you. Okay. Meaning, if you lived at the time of Jesus, yeah. you follow Jesus. If you lived right. at the time of Moses, you follow Moses. If you lived at the time of Abraham, you follow Abraham. What does it mean follow? It yeah. means you obey him in what he commands you to do. Right. You stop what he prohibits you from doing right. as much as you can. Okay. Allah okay. Azza says in the Quran, Allah, okay. Fear Allah or do the actions as much as you can. Okay. And Allah says in the end of chapter 2, Allah does not overburden a soul except what it can handle. Right. Meaning Allah doesn't put a burden on you that you cannot handle. Okay. Only what you can do. Yeah. When He created you, He knew that you will make mistakes. Yeah. That doesn't mean that if I make a mistake, I don't continue. I stop. Right. I repent. I have no intention of coming back and I regret. Right. Right? Right. So it's as simple as what? Believing in, what? in Allah. Yeah. With His names and attributes that fit His majesty. Yeah. Follow following the, the messenger of your time. Yeah. Simple as that. Can I, can I just add on? You can ascertain I'm... Allah's... Yes, of course. Sorry. You ascertain Allah's mercy because we don't believe you enter with your deeds. But we believe. That's what I wanted to say. That's what I was going to say. Okay, <laughs> okay. No problem. Okay. You don't. You, in, you don't enter with. Let me clarify deeds. that. Let okay. me clarify that. A deed is one of the criteria. Yes. But it's not the reason you enter. Meaning, if I say, I'm hiring a secretary. Yeah. And I want a woman secretary, right? Yeah. That doesn't mean any woman that will come, I will hire her. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. The reason I will hire a woman is because she will have a qualification in the field that I want to hire her yes. in. Yeah. But a condition I'm putting is that she has to be a woman. Okay. A condition for someone to be in paradise, he has to be righteous. And righteousness is following, believing in Allah and following His command. But the condition is not the reason you enter. The reason you enter is Allah's mercy. Does that make sense? Okay, that it's makes a very, sense. It's a very unique can, can point. I, can have... I give you an example? Okay, yeah. There's a hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him. A man came on the day of judgment and God Almighty said to him, enter paradise by my mercy. Okay. So the man said, oh Allah, I want to enter paradise with my good deeds. Right. So God was going to uh, let him uh, in, based on God's mercy. Yeah. 
not his deeds. Yes. His deeds played a role, of course. Yeah. But the man said, oh God, I want to go because I've, I've been your worshipper and I've done a lot of good deeds. Yeah. So God said, okay, if you want to enter by your good deeds, we have to be just. So my justice comes in place because so God is the most just. So he got the, um, what's it called? Um, the balance. Scale. The ba scale, scale, yeah? yeah? yeah. He placed all his good deeds that he did for hundreds of years on yeah. one side. Yeah. And he took his eye and put it on the other side. Yeah. Do you know which one outweighed it? Which one? The eye. The eye outweighed all his good deeds. Right. Because, the, then because the mercy, we are indebted to God when we was born. There is, we can't go to God and say, oh God, because and Allah mentions this in the in Quran. Because Allah, when he talks about hellfire, he says what you earned. Paradise is what is given. So for example, we enter, are you, I don't know if you're Christian, but you know grace. Yeah. So for example, what that shows to us is this, and this is what happened by the way next. After that happened, God said, based on my justice, go to the hellfire. Because your eye, the blessing of your eye, you can, there's no good deed you can do to repay me. Yeah. So as he was go, going to go to the hellfire, he said, oh God, please forgive me. Enter me into paradise by your mercy. Okay. What we understand from this is the following. Doing good deeds, we have to do yes. because of who our Lord is. He deserves it. Yes. I have to. If he tells me to pray 24 hours a day, I have to because he deserves it, even though he doesn't ask me to. Yeah? Yeah. But what that teaches us is that we enter paradise in reality. The actual thing is by God's mercy. Wow. I think that answers your second I, I, question I, I, as well. I really because hope your second that question many other Muslim brothers are listening to that. Yeah. Because a That's lot of it Muslims, it seems like it's more about you need to do one, two, three, four, five and then you're going to enter into paradise. You know, but in reality, what you've just said... You know what it is? Let me tell you what you yeah. Read one. Read one. You know what it is? MashaAllah is, a lot you of know, is the, the, the angel of pa the paradise, you know? Oh, really? The guardian of paradise, yeah? Read one. Wow, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, it's a nice name. That's yeah, a beautiful name. So the thing is here, that a lot of Muslims, sadly, they don't understand the true essence. We have a lot of Muslims here, and look, we all have our shortcomings. Yeah. They don't understand the true essence. We have some people here, they have memorized Quran. Yeah. And they, you speak to them, it's like a machine, mashallah. Yeah. But you look at their character, how they treat another Muslim. You say, I would have been like wow. run for your life. Yeah. The point is this, the essence of Islam, once you understand, sometimes I think to myself, Muhammad, how, does, how is one arrogant, the hadith you mentioned about, there's going to be, it was talking about hadith, yeah. that there will be a person of the actions of paradise. He's a person yeah. that's known for righteousness. Yes. And there is a handspan between him and paradise, right. but there's an action that he does that was written for him, and he ends up in the hellfire. Right. How could you know this hadith and be arrogant? Wallahi, I don't know how a Muslim and arrogance can come together. It's impossible, because that shows you and the first three people to enter the hellfire. Quran, memorize Quran, charity, uh, jihad, for the, for the sake of Allah. This should be, Wallahi, if you hear this hadith, I don't know how one can be arrogant. So what I'm trying to say in a nutshell yeah. is that some Muslims, sometimes they don't understand the true essence of Islam. Yeah, they yeah. think it's like, I'm like a robot, I'll memorize this, I'll yeah. do this, I'll do that. There's going to be people who will stand in front of Allah with Salah, yeah. but they might end up in the hellfire because of the oppression that they did to others. Yeah. You know the, re do you know the, re the main reason is what? Okay. Main reason is they have not been taught their creed, their essential creed. I'll yeah. tell you why. Because one of the, the, the things that we believe in as Muslims are called Iman. Iman is faith, faith yeah, but yeah, believing, yeah. right? And it can include the whole creed of the religion, right? Iman to us is three things. Right. Statement, saying yes. with the mouth, yes. right? Believe, conviction in the heart yes. and actions. Right. So if you don't have these three things yeah. combined, you're missing a part of Iman. Meaning you're missing, you're missing a part of your essential creed. So someone cannot just do the actions and not have them internally within his heart. You get wow. the point? Why? Why? Like, no, I'm saying wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying you're saying why. I'm yeah. saying why. Yeah, <laughs> it's go, not go, you, go. don't worry. So, you know the poet, he said something beautiful. He said, yeah. You disobey the Creator. Yeah. And you claim to love the Creator. Yeah. That's indeed a false analogy. Right. If your love for Him was true, you'd yeah. obey Him. Because the one you love, you obey. Right? Wow. So, what's in the heart manifests on the limbs. So if you don't see the actions Can are there, on you? Just, that, that means yeah. there is a deficiency in the heart of that person. Of it, come back. No, no, I won't walk off of it. So if you don't see the actions actualize outside. Yeah. But I want you to repeat something. Yes. And this is what most Muslims here need to know. I'm not going against Muslims here. I'm saying your, your friend here, your this brother just said something important. He said, love for the Almighty, love for Allah will be manifest in obedience. That's what you just said. And you, brother, you just said that the character is going to definitely play a part in anybody who's going to enter Jannah. The Prophet said, I came for nothing but to perfect good character. Okay, so no, this, is the, this is what I'm saying to my brother a, a few moments ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
a lot of these discussions here are centered around whether you're worshiping one or three. Yeah. And the, the spirit and the character that is revealed here many a time at Speaker's Corner yeah. is not the character of the Almighty. It's the character of the enemy rather. So what you're saying here is I, I most people here need to hear yeah. because they, they're doing the things, yeah. but they're not having the right character. Let's, let's clarify okay, something. go on, go let's on. Let's clarify bro. something for you. Sorry, you got the mic. Can yeah. you just clarify something for you? When we say character, we're not saying, for example, there's going to be someone who's a Trinitarian yeah. and he's got amazing manners. Right, he's, right. He's going hell. Okay. Like, I, I can't decide that, but what I'm saying is, if he, he's asking, if he dies that, yeah. we're not saying your manners is like, oh, he's, I mean, no, what we're saying is... We told you, remember that yeah, story yeah, to go so, to the criteria yeah. to go to paradise. Yes, remember? yes, yes, yes. It yes, includes yes. What, what he's saying. We yeah. said the criteria to go to paradise, you believe in Allah, you follow yes. the messenger, right? I, that's what, I got that clear. I exactly. got that clear. So let's make that clear because this this is the Salaam right... Salaam 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 yeah. So the thing is here, what we're seeing is that the... What was I saying? I forgot. The, 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 it's not just your characters that... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like. That so was clear from what he said first. What you need to yeah. understand is this here, because sometimes we get emotionally invested, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We look at the arguments here, Christians, love, I love, love, love everywhere. But we, sometimes we look at the Muslims, they might be, not all, they might be a bit rough around the edges. Yeah. Wherever the truth is, I follow that. I don't give someone amazing character. If yeah. He's, if he's telling me Trinity, brother, Trinity makes no sense. It right. goes against. It goes against the rights of God. Okay. So, for example, your parents gave birth to you and brought you to this age. Yeah. Imagine you turn to your parents and say, "Parents, you did nothing for me. You see this tree? Yeah. I thank you every day. Tree, thank yeah. you very much. You're the best ever. Yeah. What would your What would your parents? How would your parents? Yeah, feel? they'll say that's crazy. Yeah. So. The right of God is higher than the rights of my parents. Okay. If God is the one who sustains you, who yeah. provides for you, who gave you your mom and dad. Yeah. The blasphemy, this is what blasphemy is. And people don't understand what shirk is. If we understood what shirk is, wallahi, it's worse than all sins in the world put together. Because wow. what you're doing is, imagine, look, look around, let's look around, let's ponder. Because Allah says ponder, look, look at the trees. Look at the sky, look at these clouds, yeah? Look at yourself, look at your eye, look at your limbs. God Almighty, from the very particle atoms that we can't see around us, he is the control of all of that. Okay. You turn around and say, Jesus, thank you. Yeah. That is the biggest, the most disgusting thing that you can do against God. Right. So that's the reason why it comes to your second question where you said that, um, why is it that some Muslims are going to go hell but they're going to come out? Yeah. Because they came with the foundation of worshipping Him alone. Yeah. Because that's something Allah says, I will forgive all sins. Yeah. If your sins reach mountains in the skies, I'll forgive all of them. Yeah. Unless you associate partners with me. All God is saying this. Yeah. Don't associate other partners with me. Okay. You're going to sin, I know you're going to sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not asking you to be sinless. Yeah. And that's the reason why Christians believe, I'm so sin, I'm, I'm full of sin, I need the Savior to die for me. God's saying, nobody needs to die. I don't need to kill nobody. I'm not a vampire. I don't need to see blood. All I'm asking for you is the following. You're going to sin, acknowledge you have a Lord that's forgiven, and He will forgive you. That's it. Okay. Now, okay. Um, there's I'm something that's it. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. There, there's something that I wanted to um, say, but I've forgotten now. But um, so oh no, this is the thing about the people who have done wickedness yeah. and they go to um, they go to hellfire for a billion years. In other words, what you're telling me here yeah. today, whoever is a Muslim in this world yeah. that we live in, yes. eventually they'll be in paradise. Yes, and that is the reward of believing God alone. So as long wow. as you die on that. Yeah, that is where you go eventually. You will do your yeah. time. So if as a Muslim, I was oppressing Christians and I was uh, uh, killing them, that is the wrong, I'm wronging another soul. Yeah. However, because I died with the main foundations yeah. of not violating the rights and the sanctity of God, yes. I will do my time. Yes. And by the way, this is not the discretion of God. God yes. used to say, I forgive what you did. Yes. Except shit, not shit. Anything about, that's at wow. God's discretion. It's like saying here, if you cross the traffic light, yeah. maximum 5,000 pound fine. The judge might say to you, 200 pounds. Yeah. It's at the discretion of God. Yes. So let me just add a very, very important point on that. Yes. Very, a small caveat, yeah? Yeah. If you are, yeah. Living upon falsehood, yeah. you will die upon falsehood. Yes. Prophet والسلام, he said, Man عاش wow. على شيء مات عليه. Who lives upon something, he will die upon it. So don't think if someone, as I say, he says to you, I'm a Muslim, I'm doing all the evil things, and then I'm going to die on Islam, nah. and then I'm going to enter yeah. paradise. My name because is the, reality, uh, the reality is, you don't know you're going to die on Islam. Yes. Yeah. None of us knows. Exactly. We believe that the hearts are between Allah Azza wa Jal, between the fingers of Allah Azza wa Jal. He shifts them the way he likes. Which means, 
You can be, the, the Prophet ﷺ said, you wake up as a believer and you sleep as a disbeliever. You sleep as a disbeliever, you wake up as a believer. Which means what? There is no guarantee that you would die as a Muslim to begin with. Yeah. So you, my brother, you're saying, you die as a Muslim. Yeah. If you die as a Muslim, you'll enter eventually after your punishment. What makes, what gives you the guarantee you will die as a Muslim? That's how we believe it as Muslims. We say if you live upon falsehood, there's no guarantee to begin with yeah. that you will die as a Muslim, you will yeah. earn to go. Because that's what Allah says, dua? yes, because Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Allah does not do injustice the way of an atom. So Allah, if He sees someone, He doesn't deserve paradise. Maybe for His mercy, He gives him paradise, right? But majority of the time, Allah Azza wa Jal will not give someone something and give do injustice to someone else. Allah will never do injustice to someone else. Meaning you lived all your life, you're doing good, someone else didn't do, and Allah will not make you the same. That will never happen. You get the point? Because okay. Allah Azza wa Jal is just. And now we say, you want to say the, the dua, the Prophet the, 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 said, which one? The one is, uh, we say, Prophet he commands us to say, Oh Allah, show me the truth as truth and guide me to follow it. Yeah. And show me the falsehood as falsehood and guide me to avoid it. Even we're believers, we're saying that. And turn yeah. off the hearts. That yeah, and, and, and uh, I said to him that one. I said yeah, that yeah, one. yeah, 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 yeah. I said that. Yes, yes, I said that one. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, so you've answered I, my I, question. I am a Christian. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. What's, what's, can he ask you a question? What's, okay? what's, um, from what we've said to you, yeah. Uh, look, I'm not here. Look, I'll be honest with you. Yeah? yeah. I'm not here to be like you know. You know what shahada is, yeah? Um, Someone coming to Islam. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, look, yeah. I'm not here to force you to accept Islam. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's in the hands of God. No, that's fine. We, that's fine. We just try to talk. And explain. No, I was what? very encouraged by what you were saying what? earlier because yeah. a lot of people are not talking about these things here. Yeah. They're mostly focusing on the debate of shirk. You know, that's the, that's basically, yeah, I don't know if I pronounced well, it right, but that's the shit, issue. That is true. Look, it, it is a fundamental thing yeah, to be discussed. That's fine. But it that's can fine. be discussed in good manners and good yeah, etiquette. Yeah. Look how we're discussing that. We're yeah, just, that's what I'm saying. We're talking yeah. about shit. Yeah. But the point is, we're discussing in such a way holistically. Yeah. But Radwan, um, what is, was he born a Christian? I was born a Christian. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Because we talked about, for example, entering paradise by God's mercy. Yeah. You've heard what we've just said. Yes. Does it make sense to you? Does it not make sense to you? Does it, is it like, we're having a nice cigarette discussion. I'm not here to challenge Yeah, no, no, no. Um, 100% sure. Yeah. I believe that nobody is going to enter paradise except by the mercy of God. Okay. Uh, so that, that's why I was saying, when, I, when, when you walk around here, it yeah, seems yeah. like it's something else, you know? There's a lot of and, going on. And, and so mercy, and that's something that is not promoted as much in Christianity and Islam. When we say most merciful and most gracious, what does that mean? Yes. That's most merciful. You understand? You've done what you've done, but I'm saying you can still come in. If you offer forgiveness, you seek for forgiveness. You seek for the right path, you understand? You're a Muslim then. Okay, but hold on a no, second. No, but what you said is fundamental because what you so, said is, you did not mention a sacrifice. Yeah. You said, God is the most merciful. Yeah. He just wants you to turn to Him. Yeah. How, how, how are you a Christian if you believe what you just said now? Because it's very profound. Uh, but the thing is, I don't want to get into the issue of Christ, Jesus, because I, I think we believe differently. I believe in Christ, um, as Jesus as my, as my Savior. I believe in the Bible. And I'm asking these questions because of what you guys were saying earlier. Okay. You mentioned character, yes. how we are transformed as Muslims according to what you were saying. Yes. You mentioned the mercy and the grace of God. He said, he said how are... we are transformed as Muslims. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so... I'm just joking okay. with you. Just, no, 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 but... I'm really joking with you. Joking. Yeah. No, no, no. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. So it's good to discuss these things because I believe we're all growing, we're all learning. Um, but I have my belief and, and that's what I... I, I mean, I believe okay, it solidly. But Rizwan, you came to us today because yeah. you observed a um, you observed a group of people who you believe that were not conducting themselves in the right way, Christians and Muslims. Yeah. Now, that was a concern for you. Yeah. Now I'm coming to you as your brother in humanity yeah. to tell you I have a concern as well, and my concern is that you want paradise for me. Hundred percent. I want paradise for you. Hundred percent. So I have to come to you. Because just as you came and saw this, observed it, yeah. how is it that you acknowledge it? Remember, I'll give you the example of your mom and dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you believe Jesus to be divine? If Un so, 100%. how do you reconcile with yourself when we gave the example of the mom and dad yeah. and thanking another deity yeah. because you're doing that? Because you said that your mom and dad would not like that, yeah. but you're doing that yourself. I'm just curious. Okay, okay. The, the problem that we're going to have is I'm going to start quoting from the Bible. Yeah. And then it's going to get into a, and that's what I don't want. I don't want. So, so, so I believe that Jesus is divine. I believe that the, the Holy Spirit is divine. I believe the Father is divine. Um, my main issue, sometimes when I'm here, is focusing on living right before God. 
being doing what is right in the sight of God, submitting to Him not only on speaker's corner when you come here to discuss, yeah. or when you go to mosque, or when you go to church, yeah. but during the week when you're talking to people, when you're interacting with your family, yeah. are you revealing the character of God or the character of the enemy? That's the true, issue. True, true, Rizwan. But so that's what, what about, I'm saying. What about if you're wronging God? Because we're talking about here how one treats each other. Yeah. But what is worse, me treating someone else right or wrong? Yeah. Or me try. Imagine, imagine this. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine I'm a very charitable man. Yeah. Yeah. I give everybody money. Five thousand, ten thousand a year. Yeah. Am I a good man? Yeah, you, you're doing a good thing. Yeah. Okay. What if I go home and I beat my mom? Yeah, that's wicked. One, Hypocrisy. One, one second. This is the point here. Who cares if I'm good to the entire globe? Everybody loves Ali. Ali is amazing. But when I go home, I oppress the very one who gave birth to me. Mm. Now the point is this. You can be good to everybody. Yeah. Let's have good manners with each other, Muslims, hug. Okay. But if you are violating the rights of God Almighty, yeah. by, and I'm not saying you intention doing it, I don't... Cause by worshipping Jesus, yeah. Yes, So, because what it is you're doing is, God Almighty is, and this is a commandment in your Bible. Yeah. Do not worship any other God besides me. Yes. Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment? Yes. Hear, O Israel, listen. The this Lord is, our God I, is if, one. If I said to you, if I said to you, guys, I want to give you a reminder. If I said, listen, yeah. I'm saying open your ears. Yeah. Hear, O Israel, yes. your Lord God is one. But one, don't you think what you're doing is the biggest, and I'm not saying you're doing it intentionally. I'm not saying you're a bad person. What I'm trying yeah. to say is this. Ridwan, does that not make you think? Hold on a second, man. I'm actually, indirectly, unintentionally maybe, insulting my creator who's given me everything and I'm ascribing all of that to Jesus. Okay, according to what you're saying, 100% yes. But as I said before, um, that's why I didn't want to get into that because um, I, I believe in the Bible as the word of God, you know? But and if is not the word of God? Okay, then that's where we're gonna let, let, let us agree to defend. I, I want to end on a good note rather than because I appreciated it's what right. you said. Just, can I yes. say something too? Right? Go on. I believe there is something in the society today, right? Yes. And, and it's coming from liberalism, yeah. which is the, 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 the fallacy that because I respect you as yeah. an individual, yeah. or I respect you to practice your faith, meaning that I wouldn't stop you yeah. from practicing what you believe, that means I cannot in the same manner speak to you why I disagree with you. You get okay. the point? Yes, yes, yes. I believe that's a fallacy in today's society, which yeah. is uniting, but there is no uniting upon truth, it's just uniting upon whatever you believe. Falsehood. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So we believe as Muslims that yes, unity is a very important thing, as yes. we were saying, but it has to be unity on truth. Right? So Allah commands us in the Quran, unite on the rope of Allah. The rope of Allah, we believe, is the Quran revelation that went on the Prophet So we believe that's what we can unite upon. Yeah. If we're not uniting upon that, then we cannot unite because that is the only thing that God told us you can unite upon, right? Yeah. So, because we want good for you, right? Yeah. Because we want good for you, we want, we care about your afterlife. Yes. We're telling you that it's not just the, now you're saying to me that people yeah. are saying things which are correct, but they're not behaving correctly. Yes. We are saying there has to be the two. Yes. You have to be upon the correct faith. Remember, I told you three things, yes, right? Yes. It has yes. to be the correct faith in your heart. Yes. It has to be the sayings has to be yes. correct, and the actions has to be correct, yes. right? So it cannot be one, and you're missing one. So my brother, you're saying one, you're emphasizing on one, which is yeah. a good thing, yeah. because it's not enough emphasized on people don't talk enough about it. I agree yeah. with you, but I believe you're missing that more essential yeah. point, which is what is inside your heart. The man is between you and God. Yes. That's what it. What is inside your heart? This is between you and the people, like he said. Yeah. Yeah. But what about between you and your Creator, yeah. right? If you say you believe the Bible is the word of God, we respect that you believe that. We yeah, respect yeah. you as an individual. We give yeah. you the right to believe that. Yeah. We disagree with you. Yeah. So we're saying you disagree with you, you disagree with us, we disagree yeah, yeah, with yeah. one another. Why can't we listen to each side? Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong yeah. and I will become a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you think... I agree. I why agree. don't you think that's a, that's a possibility? No, right? no, no, 100%. Yes. Yeah. So maybe if you really want good for me and you yeah. know that Christianity is the truth, you believe is the truth, yeah. you should also offer me the courtesy and the, the, the respect to tell me what you believe because maybe I'm missing it. Do you know what we believe as Muslims? It's an obligation yeah. for Muslims as a community yeah. to share the message of Islam. Why? Because maybe you're somewhere, you never heard the message, you didn't know the truth. How would you connect to the truth? Yeah. There has to be someone telling you about the message, telling you about the truth, bringing you to it. Yeah. So you are an individual who believes your scriptures from God. 100%. You believe Jesus is X, Y, and Z, right? Yeah. So if you believe these specific things, yeah. we want to know why you believe them. Yeah. So maybe we're wrong, because we can be wrong. Yeah. We're not saying, that's why I told you, Prophet taught us to seek, to see the truth as truth, yeah. and 
follow it and to see falsehood as falsehood. Because right. you might see truth as falsehood yeah. and you might see falsehood as truth. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the truth and the truth truth. Yes, yes, the, in yeah. the Bible, yeah. He so we're so. asking you, so we're asking you to, cl to help us if you believe that we're not absolutely on the truth, unless you believe in the truth, that's a different story. But if you don't believe we're on the truth, but, to help us maybe come to the truth on your side. Why you believe you have the truth? I don't mind, I don't mind doing one. that, yeah. but I, I don't want to do it here and I'm going to tell you why. The reason discussion. why tell is me, because yes. we're going to end up going back and forth. I know already it's going to happen. Um, you're gonna, I'm going to say one or two things, then you're going to say but. So I don't want us to get into a, a, a debate, a negative, a negative debate, you understand? I appreciate what you guys have shared and, you, I, and I ask for you to pray for me okay. and I'm going to pray for you. That's, that's Can I ask I think you, do you believe debates are always negative? When it's done in the right way, like you guys have just done, yes. it's good. So why, you don't, why can't we continue in the same way? Okay, I'm going to tell you simply. We can try, I'll tell you this. Yeah. We can try yeah. to go into uh, the beginning of it. If you found out yeah. that it became a fighting match, as you say, yes. or a bad manners, uh, yes. you can, we can stop it. Okay. Whenever you will say we need to stop, you'll stop. Is that, does that seem okay? Are you okay with that? Yes, that's fine. Okay, that's, I that's think fine. that's a neutral position. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No, 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 you know what? You better run. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. He's your friend, by the way. He's your friend? Yes, yeah, my friend. I had a discussion with him. Okay. Guy. I had a discussion with him before. Ten, ten minutes, please, if you don't mind. Okay, wait. By the way, I have only ten minutes as well. Okay. So he's good. I need, I have a lecture to give. I need to go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to, yes. yeah, just quickly, I'm going to tell you what I believe. And yes. then, please, we just end in a peaceful way. Yes. Okay. okay um, Um, as I said before, yes. I want to leave Jesus just to one side for now. I believe that in the beginning, according to the Bible, mankind was made perfect. When God made mankind, He gave them free will to choose. Because in Eden, according to the Bible, Adam and Eve had free will. They weren't, that didn't have a microchip in them to just bow down to the Almighty. They didn't have that. So they had free will. And God says in the book of Genesis, he gave them the Garden of Eden. He says, of every tree you can freely eat, but don't eat from that one tree. That's free will that they had. He wouldn't have said that if they didn't have free will. And you said earlier, if you love Almighty, you'll demonstrate by obedience. The one thing that the Almighty wants from all of us here is love. He doesn't want service from because we're, we're like robots. No, He wants us to love Him and demonstrate that love to Him by walking in obedience to Him. That's what He wanted for Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve then disobeyed because they had the free choice, they disobeyed. And when they disobeyed, sin came into this world, which I believe is breaking the law of God. The definition of sin according to Christianity should be, most Christians don't know this and they don't believe this, but should be breaking God's law. God had a law. In First Apostle of John chapter 3, it says that. Verse 4, exactly. So they broke the law of God. Because they broke the law of God, they had to die. Because the wages of sin, the punishment for sin is death. As Paul says. So they had to die. Okay. So, because most gracious and merciful is the characteristic of the Creator, He decided, you know what? You have failed, but I'm going to give my life for you so that you don't die. Now, I'm not talking about the death you die when somebody shoots you or a car runs over you. I'm talking about the death you die eternally. So, Adam and Eve were to die eternally, but not only Adam and Eve, the posterity of Adam and Eve, because you and I come from Adam and Eve. So, all of us, are sinful and we have to die, not the death that we die when somebody shoots us, the death, eternal death. Spiritual death. Yeah, exactly. We're supposed to die eternally, never wake up. Mm -hmm. But God said, I love you so much that I'm going to come. And first of all, this is so important because most Christians miss this. I'm going to come and I'm going to demonstrate obedience. When Jesus came to this earth, he lived a sinless life because Hebrews 4 tells us so repeatedly, he lived without sin. Why? So he could give an example to humanity and then give his life. Because if he sinned, what is the wages of sin? Death. So why did Jesus die? I believe two reasons. Number one, to show humanity how to live without sin. Number two, to reveal the character of God. That's why he came and he did that. But you, you said two reasons why Jesus died. You mean two reasons why Jesus came? The two reasons why he came? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. So. I want you to finish. I want you to, to say what you want so I don't interrupt you. Is there anything else so, you want to say? Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, Everybody right now on planet Earth, I believe, is making a decision. Where are you going, bro? Come, is making, come, is making a decision yeah, whether yeah, they're going to yeah, live or die. It's your conversation, man. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. in a long story short, yes. I believe that 
right now everybody is making the decision whether they're standing on the side of God or on the side of the enemy. There's no five sides. Yes. There's the side of God and the side of Satan. Yes. Satan is real. Completely agree with you. So, no matter how many religions there are in the world, there's only two sides, the righteous and the unrighteous. And we are all on one of those sides. And I believe what designates a person righteous is their connection with God. The Almighty, as you said, Iman, that's what I believe is faith. Faith in the Almighty can keep me from doing what is the wrong. The Iman translates to faith, by the way. Exactly. It's the same thing. Yep. So, that's what I believe. Faith in the Almighty and allowing Him to work in us. Because we as Christians believe that you cannot do nothing, you can't do good works without having that Iman, without having that faith in God. And so I believe if we live a life of faith, because even the good things that I do in my in my day-to-day -day life is because I have that faith. Sure. So without that faith, we can never be saved. And without the grace of God or the mercy of God extended, we can never be saved. So this is what I believe is the good yes. news for everyone. Yes. There's an opportunity for all to be eternally saved. One other thing where we differ from what you've said earlier, we believe at the end of time, the last day, when we stand before the Almighty, there is going to be no burning for a million years and then you enter paradise. You burn and you will ne you never enter paradise. You chose to follow the, the wrong side, you're going to end up on the wrong side. You chose to follow the way of the Almighty, you're going to end up in paradise. Okay. That's what I believe. Okay. Now, is it okay if I say about okay, what I think, I, think, what you say. Yeah. I think about what you said to me, right? There is two, two main points I want to make, right? Yeah. To me, you just told me a lovely story. That's how okay, I see that's it, right? Fine. You told that's me fine. a lovely story. And, and and you you're making sense of it, right? It makes okay. it, it makes sense to you. You believe it, right? Yes. I ha I have two main questions, right? Okay. It's either I tell you, right? A. Why do you believe these events that you spoke about took place in reality or not? Yeah. Are they true about God? Like when you say God wants. Yes. God says. Yes. God did, right? Yes. So why do you believe that's the case? Do you do you do you can you support or substantiate yes. like uh, that God actually commanded these things? That's the first thing I would ask yes. you. Second thing, if I adopt right yeah. what you said, I will tell you that I found contradictions in what you said. Okay. I'll explain what I mean. You told yeah. me Adam and Eve was created perfect. Humans are 100%, created perfect. 100%. 100%. Definition of perfection is free from deficiency. Yes. It's definition of perfection. Yes. The perfection is 100%. You cannot add or subtract. Yes. If you take from it, it's deficient. Yes. If you add to it, it's deficient. Right. Which means you have to leave it the way it is. If I believe, this is the following. If you say to me, Adam and Eve was created perfect. Yes. Then by default, they cannot sin because sin is a deficiency and they're perfect. First contradiction I found, right? If God created them, I'm saying in the storyline, yeah. the contradiction I'm founding. Okay. First contradiction I see, if you're perfect, how can you disobey God and eat from the tree? Disobedience is a deficiency. You were not perfect to begin with if you disobeyed God. Number one, right? Number okay. two. I well, well let's stick with the number one first. I, I tried to... Okay, go on, uh, go, sure, go, sure, go sure. No, 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 go no, on, no, go on. You're right. I'm, I, I, okay, I, so... To me, I'll tell you something very important. Yeah. I would. I don't need to speak a long time. If you want to, if you want to, if there's a point you want to speak, yeah, I'll let you let's, speak. Let's I'm not going to interrupt you. At a point but you can interrupt okay, if no, you no, like. Okay, no, 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 finish, finish your no, point. No, I don't mind you interrupting as well. Okay, so the point okay, is, the point is, right? This is the first, because I found many inconsistencies. I was just starting with the first one, right? Yeah. Second inconsistency I found is this, right? Is, according to the biblical narrative, Yes that uh, they did not know what's right and wrong. They ate from the tree of right and wrong, of knowledge of good and bad, yes, correct? Yes, yes. Which means that Adam and Eve did not know what was good and bad. If I did not know what was good and bad, I cannot be held accountable for the action I did because I didn't know it was bad. So if there is an infant and he throws a bottle or he breaks a, breaks a glass, I'm not going to punish him because I know the child does not have the... He's ignorant. Yes, he, he doesn't know right or wrong. Yes. Similarly, if Adam and Eve did not know right and wrong, it's, it's crazy for God to say, I'm going to punish you and all your descendants who didn't do anything yes. for what you did that you didn't even know was wrong. To me, that's another inconsistency, right? Yeah. Another inconsistency. By the way, I can put many, so I don't want to give you so many points so you don't lose them, yeah? Let's just start with the first point I said. Why do you believe, which this is an essential point for me, yeah. why do you believe what the Bible says is true of what God said? So basically the question is, why do I believe the Bible? Yes, why do you believe it has it's an accurate representation of what Jesus said or of what God says? Okay, um, the reason why I believe the Bible, <clears throat> number one, is because of the prophecies of the Bible. The Bible is made up of 66 books. And those books, when you look at history, validate the scriptures, validate the prophecies of God's word. So the, the books of the Old Testament, for example, even when you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, there's evidence that these scriptures were given by the people who wrote them, the Old Testament. 
But also, when you look at the prophecies, for example, in the book of Daniel, Daniel mentions the kingdom of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome. So, so when you look at that and you look at the museums here in England, for example, in Oxford, those kingdoms actually existed. Now, one way that God shows He's the true God, according to what we believe, one way is He shows what is coming before it happens. Prophecy. And so when you look at the prophecies of the Bible, 100% sure they are accurate and they can be proven to be true. So this is why I believe the Bible. Okay, okay. excellent, excellent. Yeah. Let me move on with you in your direction, yeah? Yes. Let's leave the inconsistencies for now, yeah? Which, uh, which I found, right? Okay. Let's start with your direction, right? You mentioned to me two points. Yeah. You said there was Old Testament prophecies. Yes. And you said to me, that, uh, you mentioned the Sea Scrolls as well, right? I don't want to take, our battery is running out. How long is your battery? Five minutes, <laughs> five minutes, I'm five going. Minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Five minutes, five minutes, because we need to finish as well. Yeah. So I'm saying, I'm saying right now, right? Yeah. You mentioned two points. Yes. First point is you you said there is prophecies in the Old Testament. Hundred percent. That yes. confirm what happened, what's happening right now. Just change the question. Confirm yeah. what's happening right now. Stop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 